Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to continue to add security features to our application. This time around we are going to make a difference between admin level users that can edit the data and normal users that can only read the data. So the first thing that we are going to need is one user of each type. Let's then switch here to our database, we are going to head over to the database console and we are going to mark, for example, this user here, Clara, as being an administrator. So let's add here a field called isAdmin, we are going to give it the type boolean and we are going to set it to true. So this is going to be our administrator user. On the other hand, this other user, the jhadesdev user, is not going to be an administrator. So let's set isAdmin to false. Now that we have one user of each type, let's switch over here to our security rules and let's add here a new function that we are going to be calling isAdmin that is going to allow us to differentiate between these two different types of users. Before checking if the user is an admin or not, first we need to make sure that the user is authenticated. So let's call the isAuthenticated function just like before and now we are going to check if the user is indeed an administrator. So for that, we are going to have to read the user document from the database. In order to do so, we are going to use another function. This is called the get function. This allows us to retrieve data from the database from inside a Firestore security rule function. The syntax for accessing this document is similar to the one that we have used here on our exists call. So we are going to take this path, which is the path to the user document and we are going to apply the path here in our get call. So this get call is going to give us back a document snapshot object that contains both the data and some metadata of the corresponding document. In this case, we want to access directly the data property of the document snapshot. And from there, we want to check the value of the isAdmin property. So this user is going to be considered an administrator if the isAdmin property is equal to true. Let's Let's now use the isAdmin function in order to grant write access to admin users. We are going to head over here to the courses collection and we are going to allow here a write operation to go through but only if the user is an administrator. Otherwise this condition is going to fail and the write access is going to be denied. Let's apply a similar logic here to the lessons collection. We are now going to publish this new set of rules and once the rules are propagated, we are going to switch here to our application and we are going to try to edit the data using the jhadesdev user. So this user here is not an administrator. So what we would expect is that the user can read the data, which is still the case, but this user should not be able to edit it. Let's try here an edit operation. We're going to click on save and we're going to see that indeed we get here a permission denied error. Let's now log out from the application and we are going to log back in but this time around using an administrator user. After a moment we are signed back in again but this time around with an admin user. Let's now try to edit here the data, we are going to click here on the save button and we are going to see that this time around the request went through. So if we reload here the application we are going to see that the data was indeed persisted to the database. We can see that we have here the new title getting displayed. So as we can see at this point in the course we have implemented a lot of commonly used security requirements. The application is only visible to whitelisted users and there is a difference between admin level users and normal users. Now let's take our security rules one step further, we're going to see how these rules can also be used to implement something similar to a database schema just like we have in SQL databases. 